Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I remember when the Wii U came out while I was in high school. I was surprised when I found out it didn't sell well, and even though all the games I used to play on this thing are now available on the Switch, I still like keeping this thing around. And I was never made fun of for owning it, so that's a plus. Ha ah, ha! Look at that fucking nerd with his loser Nintendo system! Ha ha ha! Uh, no. I don't play this. I uh, just used a TV button because I lost my TV remote. <laughs> yeah, right. Only losers make excuses. <laughs> grandma's Kisses is the episode where SpongeBob gets made fun of when he gets kissed by his grandma and decides to start acting more mature around her. This episode aired on April 28, 2001, and it's the episode that introduced SpongeBob's grandma into the series. She's voiced by Marion Gross, and after this episode, she would have three more appearances with speaking roles throughout the rest of the show. Those episodes would be episodes 184, Blackjack from Season 5, 280, The Abrasive Side from Season 7, and 314, Pet Sitter Pat from Season 8. After Pet Sitter Pat, the character would only cameo in pictures or be mentioned by Spongebob in the future. So even though she only has four speaking roles in the entire series, I'd say she steals the show in every episode she appears in. This episode is considered one of the worst episodes of Season 2, and if anybody's seen this episode, you'd know why it's hated. Me, personally, I have a complicated relationship with this episode. There's a lot of things I do like, and other things I don't. As usual, I'll explain all this in due time. For now, let's watch this episode and see Spongebob's grandma again. So the episode starts up and Spongebob is on a hill above his grandma's house. He's very excited to see her and runs down. And then we see his grandma for the first time. She gives him some cookies, which he absolutely loves. Then he licks the spoon she used to make them and tells him a story from when he was a baby. After that, the clock strikes three and Spongebob realizes he's late for work. Three o'clock? What are Spongebob's work hours supposed to be? Spongebob's grandma drops him off and then she gives him a kiss. He goes inside and everybody starts laughing at him because they all witness his grandma kiss him and the kissy mark was stuck on his forehead. Spongebob becomes embarrassed and they continue laughing at him. Squidward adds on to it by saying that Spongebob's grandma still likes him though. I honestly thought he was going to say Patrick. Spongebob tries to wipe the kissy mark off his head, but all the jerkwads continue laughing at him until Spongebob snaps at them and runs away crying. Later at home, Patrick comforts Spongebob after what happened and tells him that he should start acting more like a grown-up around his grandma. Spongebob wasn't sure if he knew how to act mature, so Patrick taught him how to do so, which includes saying, Tax exemption! Tax exemption! Tax exemption? Tax is the only word you really need to say that makes you become an adult. The next day, Spongebob and Patrick go over to Spongebob's grandma's house to tell her that he is now a grown-up, but not before the final accessory, sideburns. When she sees them, she tries to kiss Spongebob again, but then Spongebob states that he should no longer be kissed since he is now a grown-up. His grandma agrees, and Spongebob is satisfied. But then she offers some cookies, so Patrick draws a mature act and starts eating all the cookies. Spongebob gets pissed and then upset when his grandma gives Patrick his old cookie-eating hat. Well, look who's here! He never left! Spongebob tries to talk Patrick out of this, but Patrick was enjoying eating the cookies and he didn't want to be an adult anymore. Spongebob tried to say that grown-ups had awards, but Patrick shrugged it off when Spongebob's grandma brought more cookies. Oh, adults have rewards, alright. This is my personal favorite adult reward. After more cookies, Spongebob wanted to try to have one, but his grandma insisted that Spongebob not eat that baby food. Babies don't have teeth! How can they eat cookies? Patrick went over to listen to a story about a magic sea leprechaun, and Spongebob's grandma gave Spongebob a giant manual with no pictures. After a kiss on Patrick's boo-boo, she gave Patrick a present, which was a sweater with love in every stitch, and Spongebob felt absolutely heartbroken. I was getting a sweater as a present childish. I get shirts every year for Christmas because that's one of the only things I can think of. Spongebob gets office supplies as a present, but then has to leave for work because it was three. His grandma lays Patrick down for a nap and Spongebob slowly starts to leave for work while saying things that he's very busy and may not be back very soon. 
But as soon as he leaves, he breaks down and states that he still wanted all those good things that he had when he was a baby. He cries so loudly and so long that his tears quickly flood the house. Swanon's grandma calls him down and says that he can still be a grown-up and get the love from his grandma. She gives him back the sideburns and a cookie. She also agrees to keep his breakdown a secret, but it didn't matter because Squidward and the others were spying on him and the episode ends. Yup, I think we know who the true adult is. Not me. So that was Grandma's Kisses, and I have quite a lot to say about this episode. I love how Patrick tries to cheer Spongebob up after he was embarrassed at the Krusty Krab and tries to teach Spongebob how to act more like a man. The freeform jazz scene is absolutely iconic, but my personal favorite Patrick line from this episode is this. And then you get behind her and I'll push. As annoying as the customers are, I like when the big blue fish is being long-winded and the others tell him to shut the f*** up. And of course, Spongebob's grandma. Spongebob's grandma is the best character in this episode in my opinion. She's so wholesome and the relationship between her and Spongebob is so sweet. I also love how she basically uses Patrick to teach Spongebob that he can be an adult and still get the love from his grandma that he likes. Patrick enjoys the cookies and his grandma does everything that Spongebob imagined doing with her with Patrick. And she treats him more mature by doing things that are absolutely boring, showing what the adult life is really like. Giving him food that is nutritious, but not that he would necessarily want to eat. Giving him a giant manual with nothing interesting about it. Getting office supplies as a present. And casually brushing off how busy Spongebob is to return anytime soon. And then when he breaks down, she realized her plan worked a little too well and calmly explained what she was trying to say all along. And she's able to get the message across very well. I really like the old wise characters in TV shows and Spongebob's grandma is no different. She really steals the show in this episode, not just because we get to see her for the first time, but her plan was very clever and she's just a great character all around. Now I know I was just singing the praises of this episode, but we're far from over on my opinions. Everybody says that Squidward and the Krusty Krab customers are absolute assholes in this episode. While I wouldn't use those terms, I wholeheartedly agree that Squidward and the others are very insufferable. It's just so mean-spirited, and I never understood the humor of teasing him about getting kissed by his grandma, even as a kid. Also, for me personally, after I watched this at some point when I was in grade school, I went through a phase where I didn't allow my parents to do anything along the lines of this whenever they dropped me off or picked me up from school, because I was afraid of getting embarrassed on that scale. And this was in elementary school, way before middle school and hitting puberty. You know, the time of life when teenagers actually do want to not listen to their parents. And yes, I know the lesson that is taught here, but the very last shot shows that Squidward and the others are just relentless with this. I get the plot needs to happen, but the teasing is just way uncalled for, and it does kind of drag on for a bit. Honestly, since Spongebob cried when he ran away, he probably handled it a lot better than I would have. I might have gotten angry when they were laughing at me for basically no reason. But this episode still made me feel way too worried about being embarrassed from my own parents when I was at school. I will say though, by the time my junior and senior year of high school came around, I got over that worry and had another secret that I thought I'd be embarrassed about if people knew. But that's a story for another time. I no longer cared for that kind of thing, especially since that was around the time social media started to become popular and I was sad about spending so little time with my own friends. And nowadays, this is a good episode to be reminded of the good old days. You know, before the bane of my existence came into existence. <laughs> Even though I don't like when the customers are making fun of Spongebob, and I do like how Spongebob learned a valuable lesson at the end, I feel there's something that could have been done to make this work better. For those who want me to say karma catching up with Squidward and the customers, I'm not going to say that. That would have been satisfying, yes, but I think this story would be even better if, after Spongebob learns he can be an adult and still get love from his grandma, he would then stand up to everybody who made fun of him and tell them that he is no longer embarrassed by getting kissed by her. It shows that he no longer cares that they think he's just a little baby boy who gets kissed by his grandma. And part of growing up is learning to not care what other people think about you. Embarrassment happens to everybody and it's just a part of life. 
SpongeBob does want to grow up and be mature here, and even though he learns that he can be a grown up and kiss his grandma, he would have grown up by showing that he doesn't care about them laughing at him for loving his grandma. That would have been an even better character arc for SpongeBob in this episode. Also, I have to say, the crying scene goes on for so long, and it was just a little bit annoying. Not too bad, but still not very great either. Of course, I'd argue it could be worse. Like maybe the whole town could have come in out of nowhere and started laughing at him, or maybe Patrick would have shown no sympathy at all for SpongeBob after he was embarrassed. Patrick does pull a 180 on SpongeBob when he drops the grown up bag for the cookies, but it was all a part of SpongeBob's grandma's plan anyway, so that's not a big deal. Overall, I wouldn't call this episode bad, but I do think it's more average. I would say it's definitely the weakest episode of season 2 that we talked about so far. There are some funny scenes and great character moments in here for sure, but the mean spiritedness of the Krusty Krab scene and how long and loud Spongebob was crying for does bring this one down a few points, I'm not gonna lie. I don't hate this episode at all, but I would say that if I choose to rewatch a random episode of season 2, this episode is not in my top 10 choices. Grandma's Kisses is an okay episode. I do agree that it's rather mean-spirited and that's not really pleasant to see, even if those scenes don't go on throughout the entirety of the episode. There are some redeeming qualities here for sure, like some funny jokes, some good character scenes, and SpongeBob's grandma, just as a whole. I don't hate this episode, but that's due to me being the biggest fan of this series, and it definitely could have been worse. As it stands, it's not horrible, but it could have been better as well. I will say though, after recapping that little embarrassment story, I feel like I've learned for the better and I'm over getting embarrassed or angry just for liking something from my teenage years. <laughs> uh oh, 